Hi artists! In today's video, we're going to follow Dorothy and her friends down the yellow brick road and talk a little bit about art, creativity, and spoiler alert, a lot of it is just an illusion. After watching this video, I don't think you'll think of art the same way ever again. So the subject matter of today's painting is actually perfect because I'm painting a watercolor commission of The Wizard of Oz for a client, and you'll soon see what the great and powerful Oz and us artists have in common. I'll be painting this on Arches cold press paper using what I call my ultimate watercolor palette, and we'll chat while I flow through this painting. I'm using a lot of wet on wet right now and setting the foundation for this painting with a lot of the backgrounds and textures and trying to build this layer by layer. So we're going to um, start with very blurry kind of backdrops and we'll work our way towards more and more of the recognizable aspects and the details and all the characters and everything that we love or that I love about um, The Wizard of Oz, this fantastical story. I'm using a technique now called pulling to pull my paints or my pigments down and create these really cool gradients on the Emerald City. Um, and I actually have a video all about watercolor techniques like the one I'm using right here. And I'm gonna link it in the card above as well as the description below so that you can check that out. So artists, a quote that's been on my mind recently is from the impressionist Edgar Degas. He famously said, I quote, art is not what you see, but what you make others see. And I've been thinking a lot about that and what that means to us as artists, because very often I see a lot of people fall into the trap of equating how good their art is with how accurate they are to the subject matter or um, the specific outcome of their painting. This is a huge problem, not just because you know, I think it adds anxiety and limitations on yourself, but it's not what art is about. It's kind of funny talking about it in the context of creating this painting right now with you guys, because no aspect of this painting is realistic. And let me just dive into this a little bit further. So think about when Dorothy and her friends meet the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. He's this giant floating green head surrounded by flames and smoke in this huge castle. So pretty scary stuff, but things aren't all that they appear. So once Toto pulls back that curtain, the illusion is gone and he's seen for what he really is, just a regular person like you and me. To me at least, art is kind of the same in the sense that we get to be the wizard. We get to decide what to show our audience and what to hide from them too. And it doesn't matter how you're trained, how good your technique is, where you came from. Like a film director, you get to make the decisions of what people get to see once your paintbrush touches the paper. Speaking for myself, I decide to always focus on the things that really excite me about my art, and that's always uh, obviously with the ballerinas because that's something that I'm very passionate about. But also I tend to just really enjoy embracing aspects of abstract textures, whimsical storytelling, things like that are what shape my art and that make me different from everybody else. And let me tell you a secret too, I am not the most skilled technician, I'm not the best at perspective drawing and at shading and at the more you know technical and classical aspects of art technique but that's okay because I have other things to offer and I've gotten comfortable with the fact that I can draw a viewer's eye away from what I perceive as my weaknesses and towards the things that I think that I can offer as an artist which is um, my imagination my sense of color my creativity and um, those are the things that were able to build a career for myself so there is an element of of illusion to all this and once you realize that you have a lot more power over your art and what it is you allow people to see the more you'll lean into the things that actually bring you joy and that make you happy and inspire you every day Speaking of inspiration and being inspired, one of the things that I was really looking forward to was getting to paint Dorothy's infamous red slippers and I'm giving them the extra point brush twist which is making them point shoes instead of regular slippers because obviously how could I resist? Mm -hmm. 
We're getting into details of the four characters now, so I'm doing some of the detail work on the Scarecrow, giving her a red bandana scarf around her neck and trying to tie in that red from the red shoes onto other parts of the dress and um, trying to use the same colors throughout. And I have a video all about my philosophy on color and how to elevate your color palette so it looks a lot more professional. So I'm gonna link that below so you can take a look. Um, and hopefully it'll help you to elevate your color palette as well. So what was the scarecrow missing again? I think it was, um, the scarecrow was missing a brain. <laughs> I think that's what it was, if I only had a brain. Um, and actually, if you really think about it, the journey of all these characters from the story is um, a journey to find something within themselves, which to me also closely resembles our journey as artists. For the scarecrow, that's finding a brain, and obviously we all have brains, but maybe the, the meaning behind that is just being able to be a little bit smarter with how we approach things in life. Then we have the tin man, or tin woman in this case, and they're on a journey to find a heart, which to me is a journey about finding inner strength and self-love. And then we have the lion who wants courage. So many of us artists second guess ourselves every day. So courage is something that we could all use a little bit more of. And finally, there's Dorothy. Um, and I'd love to get your take on where she fits in on the artist's journey. Let me know your thoughts and interpretation in the comments below. And I don't think any Wizard of Oz painting would ever be complete without the Wicked Witch of the West, which I'm um, doing right now here on the top left-hand corner. And she's on her little broomstick. <laughs> and um, I just decided to simplify the flying monkeys and just make them these little V-shapes because there's so much going on in this painting already that, you know, just having it be a little, um, a little nod to that is, I think, will be sufficient. I think I'm done with the main portions of this painting now, but I'm going to take the opportunity to add a little more depth and some darker values to my wooden fence and any areas that I see are looking a little flat. Glazing to me is a perfect technique to add in that extra richness and yumminess. <laughs> so let's do that right now. So I hope this video encouraged you to think about your art a little differently, even if it means you're no longer in Kansas anymore. But most of all, I hope it gives you more confidence to follow your instincts because that's where the good stuff lies.